Some new stories from Ethiopia and Eritrea for you is firstly Skandar Naga, head of Baldiras party, was interviewed by Fana TV a few hours ago. He spoke about Amharic and Fan Oromo languages. Should uh, Oromo language be taught in Addis Ababa? He expressed his views, which are being criticized by uh, Oromo's people in the Oromia region. Secondly, viewers, uh, uh, a meeting was held between a U.S. embassy in Belgium, in Brussels, their officials and Amnesty International officials, uh, where uh, a petition was submitted uh, with 20,000 signatories for the release of uh, a person who is in Eritrea. Uh, she's a girl. She's been in prison for more than for around 10 years. Siham Ali is the name of uh, the girl. Who is she? Why was she in prison? Uh, thirdly, viewers, a very powerful report has been shared. An inquiry report by two human rights organizations about Western Tigray, uh, Humra, Volkai, Sagade. Human Rights Watch and, and Amnesty International both have jointly prepared this investigative report about ethnic cleansing of Tigrayans. The report, uh, a long report uh, based on remote interviews, in-person interviews, uh, is openly accusing Amhara regional forces, Amhara militias uh, and Amhara government officials of having carried out uh, uh, crimes, uh, having committed crimes against humanity in Tigray. The report has come at a time when uh, Tigray government and Amhara regional government both are accusing each other of genocide in Volkait. Mass graves are being dug out by Gondar University researchers uh, and we saw a statement from Tigray government a few hours ago. Now this new report, title of this report is We Will Erase You From This Land. We'll have a detailed look at this report because uh, uh, the two human rights bodies are proposing deployment of peacekeepers to this area. They want withdrawal of all forces, uh, militias, Amhara forces from Western Tigray, Humra, Volkai, Sagade. Uh, firstly, we were Skandar Naga, head of Baldiras party, was interviewed by Fana TV a few hours ago. Uh, the man, when he was released uh, in January this year, after that he started his street protests, his street activities, not protests, uh, and uh, on daily basis he was seen somewhere uh, with the people. But then we saw that uh, his party came under a crackdown after adverse celebrations. Uh, dozens of his party members were arrested. He was also arrested, but he was released. Since then, he has uh, decreased. His public activities have decreased. Now he's mostly appearing in interviews. Uh, during the interview, he opposed teaching of Afan Oromo language in Addis Ababa. He said, in Addis Ababa, uh, Romos call it Fenfane, in Addis Ababa, only Amharic language should be taught for creating unity. While in Oromia, Oromo, Afan, Oromo language can be taught. In Tigray, Tigrania can be taught. But in the capital city of Ethiopia, there should be only one language and that should be Amharic. Now, this comment of uh, Skandar Naga has not gone well in uh, Oromia region. Oromia activists, they say that Amharic is being taught uh, in Oromia. So, why can't Afan Oromo be taught in Addis Ababa? Uh, well, if you start teaching, uh, if you teach uh, Fan Romo in Addis Ababa, then other regions uh, will make the similar calls. Tigrayans would like Tigrania to be taught in Addis Ababa. Afars would like their language to be taught there. 
it means that Addis Ababa will have several languages taught. Of course, a capital city should have one language, one national language. Uh, but problem is that uh, Oromia activists, some Oromia politicians, they say Addis Ababa is finfine, it's part of Oromia. So that is why they say since it's part of Oromia, uh, there should be a Fan Oromo language taught in uh, Addis Ababa. But Skandar says that for creating unity, there, must be, there should be one language only taught in uh, uh, Addis Ababa and that should be Amharic. Secondly, viewers, uh, uh, I did a new story about uh, statement of uh, uh, an Iritian journal a few hours ago, uh, Sabbath Ephraim. Uh, several viewers have shared his pictures with me. They say he is critically ill, he is severely ill, he is uh, partially paralyzed as well. He is not in a position uh, to issue a statement. He is not holding any position. He is no minister of information. Uh, you can see his picture on your screen, uh, General Sabbath Afrin. Now, the information which was shared, it was shared by, an, by some Amhara news sources. What was being said uh, has been partially corroborated like military cooperation, like training of Amhara forces uh, by Iratians. I have shared some clips in previous videos last year, like deployment of Iratian military in support of Amhara forces in border area, Sudan, Ethiopia border areas. We have statements of Sudanese army as well in this regard. So, what is being said uh, regarding cooperation between Amhara region and uh, Iratian government? It's not false, uh, but the person uh, to whom uh, the statement was being attributed, he is paralyzed, reportedly partially paralyzed, and he holds no major position with Iratian government now. Uh, the news from Eritrea viewers is that uh, uh, some Amnesty International officials have held a meeting with uh, a U.S. Embassy in Brussels, Belgium, where uh, a petition was submitted to U.S. Embassy staff. The, the petition has uh, around more than 20,000 signatories. The petition is calling for the release of an Iratian girl. Her name is Siham Ali. Uh, she has been in prison in Iratia since 2012. And when she was arrested, I think she was 15 years old. She is daughter of Ali Abdo, former Minister of uh, Information uh, of Eritrea, who fled Eritrea, he sought asylum. Then his brother, uh, his uh, daughter, they also tried to flee Eritrea in 2012. Uh, but when they were crossing into Sudan from Eritrea, they were arrested. Since then, uh, Siham Ali and the two other uh, family members of Ali Abdo are in prison in Eritrea. Ali Abdo is obviously not in Eritrea because he had fled Eritrea in 2012. Uh, Siham Ali uh, is reportedly a US national, but Eritrean government has refused to entertain her citizenship uh, as a US citizen. So she is in prison for the last 10 years. Uh, Petition was submitted to U.S. Embassy in Addis Ababa, which will be submitted to U.S. State Department and U.S. Secretary of State. U.S. has been calling for the release of these prisoners for years, but nothing has happened so far. Uh, thirdly, words, a very powerful report, inquiry report has been shared by two uh, human rights organizations, Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch. The report is about ethnic cleansing which happened, which is happening in Western Tigray, Humra, Volkai, Sakade. Before that, we have been hearing uh, in the past one week uh, conflicting claims of genocide in Western Tigray. Gondi University professors, researchers, uh, they have started a research in uh, Volkayet and they say that between Volkayet and Sagade, 
they have uncovered uh, several graves, mass graves, which have remains of Amharas who were uh, killed by Tigray fighters between 1983 and 1990. A correction because in previous videos I said uh, that it was being claimed that uh, Amharas had been killed during EPRDF rule. Now, uh, a clarification, a correction. The, the claim of Amhara regional government is that these Amharas were killed between 1983 and 1990 when Tigray fighters were fighting against Tuhela Mariam's government. Uh, and they say that around 59,000 Amharas were killed back then. Their graves, mass graves and their and concentration camps are being uncovered now. Tigray says these are new graves of Tigrayans who were killed in the past uh, 17 months or so since the start of Tigray conflict. What is this report saying? Uh, Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, both are international human rights organizations. The title of this report tells a lot. The title says, uh, we will erase you from this land. Crimes against humanity and ethnic cleansing in Ethiopian Western Tigray zone. This is the title of this report. That sums up, I think, the report. The report, how was this report compiled? Did HRW Amnesty visit Western Tigray? No, because Western Tigray is inaccessible. Amhara forces, Ethiopian government. Uh, have not allowed any aid organizations, any human rights organizations to enter Western Tigray. So how did they compile the report? They interviewed uh, remotely. They interviewed those uh, refugees who have crossed into Sudan from this, these places. Then they consulted, uh, they held uh, discussions with some experts, uh, they analyzed some medical records. And after that, this report was compiled. The report says that when Amhara forces took control of this area after November 2020, they told Tigrayans to leave the area. Pamphlets were distributed. In meetings, they were told to leave the area. And tens of thousands, they were forcibly expelled from these areas. Those who remained, they were put under torture, rapes, detentions, uh, their detention centers across uh, this, this zone uh, and uh, scores of rape cases uh, have been reported. One incident is specifically mentioned which happened on the 17th of January uh, in Adigosho town on the bank of Takeza river where 60 Tigrayan youth, they were shot at. Uh, and some other incidents are mentioned in this report. So the report says that Tigrayans were killed, they were tortured, they were detained, and it's ongoing. This, th these atrocities are still happening. Who is responsible? No mention of Iratian forces in this report, firstly. Secondly, the report blames uh, Amhara security officials, regional government officials, Amhara paramilitary group, it means FANO. Thirdly, Amhara government officials, uh, civilian officials. And lastly, it says that there could be involvement uh, or uh, there could be approval of Ethiopian government forces. So mainly, Amhara forces, militias are being blamed by this report. Now, the two bodies are calling for demobilization of all forces in these areas. They say that uh, Amhara regional forces, Amhara militias, ENDF, all should withdraw from Humra, Volkai, Sagade and African Union-led peacekeepers must be deployed to this area. Tigrayans still in detention centers must be released. Perpetrators must be brought to justice. Scout officials, their commanders should be suspended 
and detailed investigations should start. Will it happen? Obviously, no likelihood of any independent inquiry into the atrocities committed in this part of Tigray, in this part of uh, Ethiopia. People say it's not part of Tigray, it's part of Amhara, it's, uh, so we would say, part of Ethiopia. So, now, it's a very powerful report. Though uh, the investigators did not visit the area, but they have shared some evidence and they want independent investigations. They want the withdrawal of all forces. Will the government agree to such a withdrawal? I don't think so. Uh, we have been hearing about humanitarian corridor, demilitarized corridor in this region. I think uh, Tigray proposed a demilitarized corridor, uh, but it was rejected by Ethiopian government. So let's see. But this uh, report released a few hours ago is a major evidence about ethnic cleansing of Tigrayans committed in Western Tigray, Humra, Volkai, etc. Thank you.